How many music videos do you think you've done so far? Ah, man, that's a really good question. I probably made a solid 300 videos. That track is hard. What's up, Andy Mogul? Ted here, and welcome back. Today, we are off to a warehouse in New Jersey to go meet up with my friend YC Imaging and learn how to shoot a music video when you got no budget and no time to prep. Let's do this. Hey, how's it going? So before we get to location, we've also got to go get some gear. We just have our vlog gear, so we don't really have that much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go visit my friend Minyu. Oh. Minyu! Hey man! <laughs> What's up? How are you man? For hey sure. guys! He's basically gonna bring over whatever gear he's got and we're gonna see what we can make at the studio. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let's go shooting. So here's a story that you probably already heard before. You're a filmmaker doing your film thing. That is until one day, bang, super talented musician dude enters your life and he's like, hey, you wanna make a music video for me? And you're like, me? And he's like, yeah. And love his music. And you're about to say yes when here comes the catch. He doesn't have any budget to spend on the video. He's got like $5. And you can't afford to spend all your time making it for free. What do you do? I mean, is it even possible to make anything at all? So, to find out more, I called up my friend Chris from YC Imaging. Yo, Chris! Yo! What's up? What is up, man? How you doing, dude? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited. We're going to be creating some dope content today, some music video stuff on the fly. Run and gun, king. Let's do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, if you don't already know Chris, here's what you got to know. Chris is a super awesome filmmaker that has made literally hundreds of music videos, both with budgets and without. So to challenge him, I invited him to meet me in the Garden State to not only talk about how to make music videos look good on a budget, but also to see if we could actually do it. So, here's the game. Make a music video with no budget, no prep, no location, and minimal gear. Is it actually possible? And if so, how do you do it right? Now, we're gonna be going over a section of our interview with YC, but be sure to check out the full-length discussion in the podcast link below. What are your tips then for getting a music video done fast? No prep, no budget, we're just running. Um, first tip would be to maximize the location that you're at. So this can be anything from, say you have one room, just flip in as many different angles that you can in that one room. Bingo. Tip one is to scout your scene for as many different looks that are visually possible in camera. Now, traditionally, a good music video will have anywhere between three to eight different looking sets. Film as many different angles in that one location, or if you have multiple, just maximize it. Film as much as you can to make it look as interesting as possible, so. Now, there are a million reasons why one location can look better than another, but you're generally looking for two things, leading lines or symmetry. Now, leading lines are anything in your frame that creates a natural point of attention. These lines can be created by tables, by chairs, where the wall meets the ceiling, literally anything in your composition that guides and tells your audience where they should be looking. Now, symmetry is just what it sounds like. We're talking about balance, Wes Anderson movies, the left looking the same as it does on the right. And since the world is a crazy, chaotic place, symmetry can be visually stunning. In fact, if you do it really well, you can create a picture that looks almost unreal. And in terms of lighting, you have any tips there too? Um, yeah, man, so I have a couple go-to lighting setups that I do, but one thing that I like to do before I even bust out any sort of lighting is to look at the location and make sure um, see if it's any lighting there that I, that I can utilize. Tip one, start with what available light you've got in your scene. If you're indoors, this usually means windows. These will generally be your best bet for fast and soft lighting. I expect to look at the available light and from there I'll add in the lights that I need. Maybe I'll need like a backlight or even like a key light to uh, make it look a little bit better, so. Now, the main scenario when this isn't the case though is when the sun is coming directly through the window and is also uncovered by clouds. In this case, the light from the sun is actually hard. This is the opposite of our soft beauty lighting. So anytime that you got a hard pre-existing light in your location, here's how I deal with it. Put it behind your talent. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Ted, if I put a hard light behind somebody, won't that just make them look like a silhouette? And, and doesn't that look bad? Chill. The reason I'm recommending you put a hard light behind your talent is because in traditional three-point lighting, when you got two lights in the front and one light in the back, hard light actually looks better and makes a better halo. But then, get ready because here's the next tip. Forget the fill. 
Yes, I know that traditional three point lighting will tell you to always use a fill light and that's for corporate lighting when you're going for more of a flat look. But by removing the fill light altogether, you're able to create a look with more contrast, which isn't necessarily always right, but it is something that's traditionally more cinematic. Now, what's next? Well, that's totally up to you. If you have gels, now's a good time to try introducing color into your frame. If you got tube lights or practicals, you can put them in the background. I really like to swing spotlights in music videos a lot. They just look cool. It just adds another element of energy to the Movement shots. and kind of chaos. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's talk about the last component of what we're gonna go over today, your camera. I go in and I kind of have a set, a set angle choice or a set movement choice that I do. Uh, one thing that I do all the time is uh, I'll get my gimbal and I'll film a wide shot and then I'll just do the smooth in and out motion. First up is the push in and pull out. You've seen this shot like everywhere. Like if you've seen any performance music video ever, you've seen this shot. I uh, will go from that to like a close up static or either a rocky shot, maybe something handheld. The idea here is to capture details like the artist's hands or their clothes or their facial expressions. And then we'll kind of do a revolving shot with the gimbal as well. Most of the times if we have like the location that looks aesthetically pleasing on like a 360 basis or even like a semicircle. And finally, we have our last go-to shot, the orbit or the parallax. A parallax is when you move from side to side with a small arc on your talent. Just be aware of the background. You know, when you're doing those shots, those are like some of the shots you really gotta be aware of the background and what's going on and uh, try to not get the stuff in there that shouldn't be in it. And not show that you flipped locations either. You gotta yeah, keep it done, keep it done. Yeah, exactly, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Now that we know the basics and the go-tos of how to make a no budget music video, it's time for us to actually go and do the damn thing, to make the damn music video. So, the name of the game, one more time, Make a music video with no budget, no prep, no time, no location, and no, 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 no. No, this was not planned, so let me explain. Alrighty, so we actually just got off the Uber. We're gonna be shooting a music video today with a guy from Atlanta. There's an artist that Chris knows that's super cool. It was coming up that we we're gonna shoot a video for, but I just got a call on the Uber on the way over that, uh, that actually he missed his flight. So we're seeing if he's gonna get on the next flight. If not, we'll do so. We'll make something happen. We'll make something cool. We literally had no plan. I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> Alrighty, so it is officially confirmed. Our artist from Atlanta is actually not gonna be able to make it out. For a while, we threw around the idea of just canceling the shoot. Can't make a music video with no music, right? But here's what ends up happening. While we're at the location, it turns out the security guard overhears our conversation. He makes a call, hands us a phone, where on the other end, there's this guy who's like, hey, I'll be there in 17 minutes. So who's this artist? <laughs> uh, yo, so we just met this artist like 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. His name is Trillionaire Daz. Trillionaire Daz. Ted, pleasure. Daz. What's good, man? Ted, how are you? And honestly, it's pretty good. We listened to his tracks before picking one, and then before we knew it, we were off to the races. I wanted to do the first one. So, the first one got the flow. So, the game, one more time. Make a music video with no budget, no prep, no time, no scout, a minimal gear, and an artist that you met like 17 minutes ago. First thing that we did was maximize our location. The second that we arrived, Chris and I started walking around the space looking for our leading lines and symmetry. It's like a little Pinterest. It's a little Pinterest. Yeah with the drapes in the background too. Oh my gosh, yes, okay, we're gonna shoot at this location for sure, no doubt. We ended up just picking two rooms. This one here because it had a nice gritty vibe and symmetry. And this room here because, yeah, just an awesome looking room. We had less than four hours to shoot the entire video, so to save time and available light, we flipped the second room three times over to make three different looks. First, along the window for these leading lines that you see here on the floor and the windows, Second, straight down the corridor for that symmetry. And third, against the wall opposite of the windows for again, that nice symmetry again. But let's go back to that first set to talk about lighting. Before anything else, we looked at our available light. We actually had hard light coming in through those windows. So we put our hard light right behind our talent to act as an edge light. Then to avoid the silhouette look, we threw a big old 300D in this humongous octo bank. Oh my gosh. What on earth is that? I said super soft and he Wait. came through. <laughs> super soft. The super duper soft. Even my tiny eyes get that eye light from this. 
But also, we also motivated it. This quality of light looks like it could be coming from a window in front of him that's soft in frame. Is it perfect? No, of course not. But did we get a decent shot in 30 minutes? For sure, we absolutely did. Now for our second setup, we were already racing to save daylight, but again, available light first. Since the sun was blasting in through the windows, we went ahead and put them behind our talent to give him this nice little edge light here on his shoulders and his hair here. Then all we did was forget about our fill. We whipped out that same Octobank to be our main frontal light. And looking at this frame again, I think it probably would have been nice to add one more kicker on his left side to pull him out of the background. Next up was our third setup. So since we didn't have any gels on hand, using color wasn't really an option. So instead we opted for lighting effects and did spotlights. Two operators on each side, panning the light back and forth to create this kind of spotlighty effect. Finally, for our fourth setup, we flipped the room just one more time and we decided to opt for yet another lighting effect, this time by shadows. In our case, trillionaire Das arrived on set with an entourage and we wanted to incorporate some of that into the shoot. So by taking off this reflector, we made the size of our light as small as it could possibly be. And then we jacked up the brightness and set it on the floor. Now the resulting image produced these extremely tall shadows from Das's entourage in the background. And finally, our camera, Chris went ahead and did the exact go-to motions that we discussed. One, a push in, push out on a gimbal for each setup, a rocky handheld shot to capture the details and facial expressions in each scene, and finally, a parallax shot to provide some variation and some separation for our talent and when they're really grooving. 300 music videos. What would you tell yourself if you could go back six, seven years? What's like a tip that you would tell yourself? Um, I have two tips. Uh, the first one is lighting is everything. Lighting is gonna completely transform whatever you're doing. It can completely transform a mood. And the second tip is um, don't focus on the camera you're using. Don't focus on that. Yes! Don't focus on that. Yes! <laughs> I totally agree with this. Yeah, don't focus on it. If I can tell myself that way back when, when I thought, having a 5D Mark III was gonna make me um, Michael Bay. Yeah. You know, you have the best camera in the world, but if you don't light it right, it's just gonna look like crap. Yeah. So. There you go, guys. A couple of secrets on how to make a no budget, no prep music video look pretty good. If you wanna see the full video, check it out on Chris's channel. He also has a ton of awesome educational content there. I'll put a link down below. Now you can catch the full length discussion with YC where we go deeper into music video filmmaking, as well as how Chris got his start in the podcast link below. Subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button if you do. Tune in next week when we go to go meet up with Kazu Okuda, this half robot, half cinematographer guy that shoots, in my opinion, some of the greatest product cinematography in the world. I'm Ted from Indie Mogul, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bert, over to the... Hold on one sec. This is, this is Chris from eight years in the future. What? Coming back from something. He's giving you the advice. Get out of music Chris is videos. like, Morse code, trying to talk to himself.